Real churches are friends. Let's turn to John chapter 21. It's the last chapter of John's Gospel. And there's a wonderful episode here about Jesus after his death, burial, and now his resurrection. There's a great scene here that I think is uh, one of the most encouraging passages of Scripture that I know. John chapter 21, verse 1. Afterward, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. And it happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas called Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them. And they said, well, we'll go with you. And so they went out, got into the boat, and that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize it was Jesus. And he called out to them, Friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. And he said, Throw your net on the right side of the boat, and you'll find some. And when they did, they were unable to haul in the net because of the large number of fish. And then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It's the Lord! And as soon as Simon Peter heard him say, It's the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off, and he jumped into the water. And the other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from shore, about a hundred yards. And when they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. And Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish you've just caught. And Simon Peter climbed aboard and dragged the net ashore, and it was full of large fish, 153. But even with so many, the net was not torn. And Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. And none of the disciples dared ask him, Who are you? For they knew it was the Lord. And Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. And this was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. And when they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. And Jesus said, feed my lambs. And again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And he answered, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus said, Take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, Do you love me? And he said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. And Jesus said, Feed my sheep. I tell you the truth, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went out where you wanted when you are old, you will stretch out your hands, and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. And Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. And then he said to him, Follow me. And Peter turned and saw that the disciple whom Jesus loved was following them. This is the one who had leaned back against Jesus at the supper and had said, Lord, who's going to betray you? And when Peter saw him, he said, Lord, well, what about him? And Jesus answered, If I want you to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? You must follow me. 
And because of this, the rumor spread among the brothers that this disciple would not die, but Jesus did not say he would not die. He only said, if I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? And this is the disciple who testifies to these things and who wrote them down. And we know that his testimony is true. And Jesus did many other things as well. If every one of them were written down, I suppose that even the whole world would not have room for the books that would have to be written. Let's pray. Our Father, thank you for this scene of this mysterious man on the beach. Thank you for... Father, these resurrection appearances of Christ that were to remind the disciples and to remind us that though we don't see you, you are in our midst. And so we claim that promise now, risen Lord Christ, that you are in our midst. And by the Holy Spirit, you want to teach us from your word and speak to our hearts and lead us into how we can be more like you, Jesus. For we pray in your name. Amen. The first resurrection appearance that's recorded of Jesus, of course, is in John 20, when Jesus appeared to Mary Magdalene. And the second was to Peter. And the only reference to this is in Luke 24, 34, and it simply says, The Lord has risen and appeared to Simon. Now, we don't have any transcript from this conversation. We don't know what they said. It was a private conversation. There's no other record of what Jesus and Peter talked about. But the amazing thing is, is that Peter, who had just denied the Lord, had lied about their relationship, Jesus went to seek him out. He didn't treat Peter like a failure. He brought him back. But you know, their relationship was restored, but it still wasn't quite the same for Peter. And that's the way it is. When we hurt somebody else, we can ask forgiveness, we can have reconciliation, but something for a while is still not quite the same because we know we hurt this person. And so, Things are stretched out of shape. We're a little uncomfortable around them because we know that we hurt them. And even though the obstacles could be taken away between us in the relationship, there takes time to rebuild the relationship. And that's what John 21 is all about. For you see, Peter and his friends had gone back to Galilee and they were so glad to get out of Jerusalem. Jerusalem was the capital city. They were so glad to be back to the countryside. Jerusalem is where all the scandals and the corruption was. The countryside is where it was calm and they were back by the Sea of Galilee and they loved to fish. It was great to be back home. And so Peter says to his friends, hey, let's go fishing. His friends say, yeah, let's do it. And so they strike out. Now, some have criticized Peter. He was kind of moving away from the ministry. But how will Jesus respond to them? And I really believe that the way that Jesus responds here in John chapter 21 is the key to the whole passage. His first word to them. They're out fishing. They haven't caught anything. And what will Jesus say? In verse 5, it says, He called out to them, Friends, haven't you any fish? And I really believe that word, friends, is really the essence of the kind of relationship that Jesus is looking for, for us to have with Him and for you and I as Christians to have with each other, that we be friends. Now the Brits call this, They'd, they would have called out, hey, mates. And down in Texas, where I used to love, they live, they might say, hey, partner. And in the hood, as they call it in America, in the big cities, 
uh, the, the phrase is, hey, dogs. And so that's kind of what Jesus is saying here. It's a term of friendship. Hey, friends, haven't you any fish? You know, I think one of the reasons why we miss Jesus is we expect him to come to us like some great king saying, kiss my ring. Or we expect him to come to us to like, like some kind of a controlling mother or some family member who's mad at us. But that's not how he comes. He comes, hey, friends. TBS Seminary is a nonprofit project. Our joint effort will bring about the common purpose of making Christian education available around the world and developing good Christian servant leaders. You have a unique opportunity to partner in this effort through your prayer and or financial support of TVS Ministry. For more information, please visit tvsseminary.com.